Hi guys, just before I get into showing you the, the loop receiving, I just thought uh, I'd just show you some pictures of uh, where I've got it installed in my garden. Um, as you can see there, uh, just to give you an idea of size, it's very small and compact. Um, you can see the frequency range. Now I've got documentation that says 100 kilohertz uh, to 30 megs. This is uh, 0.5 uh, megs to 30 megs, but I'm not going to argue with that. And the remote supply voltage, 5 to 12 volts max. Well, from micro USB connection, uh, I think you'd be struggling to find 12 volts being supplied to this, but uh, it seems to have a very robust uh, tolerance in relation to voltage. Uh, more pictures. I did take one inside the enclosure itself. Uh, there you go. Uh, it's pretty well watertight, to be honest. There's a, there's quite a few reviews of these. Um, that have been out uh, over years and uh, never had any water ingress. So it's pretty well potted, pretty well sealed. I believe these wing nut fixings for the actual loop part of the um, the antenna are all stainless steel. Uh, I did actually check to see if there was a weatherproof seal in the lid and uh, there is there is one there. I have to double check that. Yeah. Okay, now I've got this sat um, about two and a half meters above the ground in my garden on a cheap fiberglass fishing pole. Uh, in the background, you can see my collinear there, and that's my flight aware ADSB receiver uh, antenna, uh, which I'll uh, show you in a, another video. And what we've got here, um, yeah, just another image. Uh, it uh, in situ uh, this is uh, I'm doing I'm actually putting this together backwards so I actually did the filming uh, which you'll see shortly last night so I've done this today so this is RG I think it's 174 10 meters and just a disclaimer it is a um, I'm not going to teach you how to suck eggs but uh, it is a receiving loop only not a transmit and I wouldn't recommend you use this on a transceiver uh, being an active loop, uh, you may damage your preamp circuitry. Um, I may be wrong, but I do see documentation saying that. So use it on a, a receiver only. Anyway, I'll say um, seven threes on this little bit, and we'll cut into my um, my video of the uh, the loop in action. Right, I'm in the shack now. Um, I did consider using this um, DX394 receiver, but I thought I'd sort of use a, um, an SDR interface rather than me just showing you the, uh, the dial and the, the readout and the listening to the audio. Um, so I thought I'd use my um, SDR Play RSP2. Um, what you get with the MLA kit as well um, is this little amplifier module here. Uh, this connection on the left here, this goes to the antenna. You get about, I think it's about 10 meters of this uh, very small coax goes to the active loop antenna. And then you get a, a little short uh, bit that goes to your receiver. So you could adapt these SMA connections to, to whatever receiver you want. Um, <clears throat> so uh, also you get this white cable here, which is the uh, five volts that's needed to drive the little amplifier module. I'm just using a, a USB power bank. So, uh, and I'm going to be using uh, SDR Uno. Uh, so I'm just all ready to video now. Uh, so this, this, this scope here on the left is uh, the actual, and this one is my OBS um, recording software. So we'll cut over to that now for you. Right, um, I've just fired up SDR Uno, and uh, I'm just going to show you the amateur bands. Um, the reason for that, I don't really want to show you uh, or let you listen to the um, AM broadcast bands as there may be music being played and uh, I run the risk of a, a copyright strike if I come across that but believe you me it works fantastic for the money it's a great loop um, I was considering getting a Wellbrook loop um, but as my first active loop just purely for listening I just thought this was the cheaper option for now um, I don't know what the comparison is but from my location and from where you've seen the loop mounted, it's, you know, I can't really fault it really. Um, it gnaws out a lot of noise as you expect from a loop uh, compared to my um, 
my uh, nine to one uh, end fed long wire, uh, which does pick up a lot of noise, which is to be expected. But anyway, let's uh, just have a listen um, to the 80 meter band. The time now is just coming up for 20 past 11 at night. So uh, I need to stop looking at my OBS. Uh, uh. Northern Spain. Uh, Northern Spain and Portugal, that's where the lightning is. But uh, there's also a little bit over Slovenia. Uh, that's where the lightning is. Well, that's the Let's try the uh, 40 meter band. By the way, I'm not uh, piping the audio straight into the program. I'm, you're, you're actually listening listening to this through my uh, Yeti microphone. Uh, just, I just try to give your ears a bit of a rest, so it's not quite, quite, uh, you know, a lot of white noise all the time. So I hope this sounds a little bit better. I won't know until I finish editing this. You can just see the FT8 portion there. You can see the bright uh, white lines there on the waterfall. Just try one sixty. <laughs> Just a great deal, a lot of noise there. Taking my chances here because of the time of no, the time it is. Me 
many songs again, uh, uh, my friend Freddy, and uh, I wish you all the best again, and uh, up to meet you. Right, yeah, so you can see the capability for a loop that, say, costs under £40 delivered.